Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. It's Friday today, and I, oh, it's just, it's, I don't know if it's my laptop or what, but you start your video and it starts to flash, and I should be used to it by now. Um, all right, let me just take some of this off the screen, which are really annoying. All right, happy Friday, everyone. I am so excited to speak to you this morning. So it's really early in the morning Pacific time. We are in Bermuda time right now. We're in my home office. Um, and yeah, and if, you have, if you're new to the group and you don't know me yet, my name is Agatha and I am director at Fueled Bermuda and uh, integrative nutrition health coach and consultant. And I uh, also private chef. I've written a book, which is right behind me right here. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so there's a big welcome message and introduction earlier on in the pinned and featured things on the group, all right? So, great. So today I want to talk to you guys about disposable diets. I'm really excited to share this because it really came up recently as I have just recently purchased a new cell phone. So new cell phone, where's my old cell phone? Old cell phone new cell phone. <laughs> um, I'm still working with two actually. So it really bothers me. And I know I'm probably not, um, you know, a representative, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this is a lot of people actually, but it really bothers me now that I've just got this new cell phone, how disposable our technology is. It bothers me of all the things that we have the option to be, you know, to consume and to purchase, technology is my least favorite. I am of like an old world philosophy that things that you purchase should be good quality, should be value, like should have good value and should last a really long time. You can see the desk from behind me. This is a solid wood desk. These are beautiful glass. Um, not panelings, but glass sort of windows within it. This is my desk. This is the kind of desk that I really love to have. It's solid. It will last a long time, almost like a, you know, family heirloom. You could pass this desk on to the next generation. And that means that I'm not purchasing desks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven desks. Do you know what I mean? I have one solid, beautiful, um, desk that will last me a very long time. Okay. And technology isn't like that, right? You can't sort of make a decision to, you know, with desks, you can buy a cheap desk. You can buy something like from Ikea, something that's just a top and a bottom. And perhaps that's where you're at and that's fine. It's just not where I stand in terms of being a consumer. The way that I like to consume is that it's going to last me for a very long time. I've had this throw pillow for 10 years. <laughs> That picture I've had for 10 years. That picture is kind of newer. But anyway, so there are um, this dress. Gosh, I wore this dress in Hawaii at my best friend's wedding. That would have been 12 years ago. Um, and so, hey, still looks really good, right? I am not the kind of person who's gets this beautiful turtleneck dress, right? A fashion that is always in style. It's a classic style. That's how I like to dress, a classic style. I am not Mrs. Throw away your fashion, you know, every single season. I think that it's such a waste. When I see a trend that is beautiful, elegant, suits my body, or it's fun and it suits my body, and I know this will last me 10 years plus, I purchase it, okay? So, you know, nothing to, I don't like, I love to look very nice, but you know, fashion fads and throwaway fashion is out this season. You know, you just, you're done with it. Like gladiator shoes, never. I mean, it's just, it's done, right? It's this, this is not going to last you to when you're, I'm, I can wear this dress into my sixties from when you're 16. I have dresses and outfits from when I was 16, 15, 17, everything from 15 onwards. I still have some of the beautiful clothes that I had then that still look beautiful on me now. So speaks a lot to the fuel diet, doesn't it? <laughs> Not fuel diet, but fuel way of life in terms of food and nutrition. So technology is so irritating because it's so disposable. It's so disposable. Like you don't have a choice. I, I would love to have had this phone for 10, 20, 30 years, but I can't. It's, 
it doesn't charge anymore. You know, half the time it tells me that I've got like a um, water. It tells me, oh, there's water inside the charging port. I'm like, you haven't been near water. <laughs> you know, it just, it starts to go, it starts to like kind of get corrupt on the inside. Um, things don't move as fast. It starts to sort of play YouTube all of a sudden out of nowhere, <laughs> right? Um, and you know, it doesn't work with new apps. You can't like, um, certain functionality just doesn't work with this technology anymore. You need to get a new phone. I don't want to get a new phone. I don't want to pay hundreds of hundreds of dollars getting a new phone. I don't even need a new camera. The camera on this one is really good still. I think it's a great camera. Um, and it's frustrating because I have all my contacts, all of my passwords are already in my apps. I don't have to like redo all the passwords, you know, and I don't save everything like people back everything up to their Google Drive. I'm a little bit um, less trusting, let's just say that. I'm a little less trusting and so I back everything up to an external hard drive. So I don't have all my passwords saved in my Google. I don't have all my contacts in Google. Um, no offense to Google, but that's none of their business, right? So um, it makes things a little bit more complicated, right? And maybe I'm just too old school on this and maybe it's totally fine, but I just don't feel good about it, right? So I have to put all of the new, like the apps, I've, there's a way you can transfer over, but um, all your apps so that they appear on your new phone, that's great, but all the passwords aren't there. So, you know, like what is my Spotify password, <laughs> right? So I've got to go into this and all this kind of stuff. I have to go log into my Audible so I get all my audiobooks uploaded. It has taken me about three, now we're on four weeks for sure, four weeks. I got it on July 5th. So it's August 5th right now. Um, and uh, I'm still in the transfer phase because I don't have like a whole like three hours to devote at one point in time to, you know, converting my phone over. And they're not very helpful anymore with the service at, at I don't know, at where I get my phone. They say, you know, that they're not allowed to help you <laughs> bring everything over. So you have to do it all your, on your own, which is, I think, I, I asked him, I'm like, how is that better customer service than how it used to be? When I worked at the law firm, I used to manage all IT. And what we would do is um, I would bring the phones in and I would have excellent customer service. And I would just say, transfer the data from here onto here, please, for, you know, this partner, that partner, the senior associate, that associate, right? So. Um, I took care of all of the IT on top of all the library uh, and information services and research services, databases, collection development, et cetera, et cetera, budgeting, um, finances and stuff in those areas as well as marketing, right? So I had many hats that I wore at that law firm. Really loved the job, incredible job for an entrepreneur, somebody who was a real go-getter who really wants to, you know, can manage their own projects and take things on. But it used to be that you would take your technology and they would assist you. In any case, it's so disposable. Like I have, oh, I don't want a new phone. I don't want to A, waste my money. It's constantly spending money. It's constantly going, you know, I, I gotta, it's annoying to me. I hate it. I hate it. I want to get a nice dress that lasts me for a really long time because I don't like shopping. I don't know, I'm really unusual as a woman for sure, but shopping isn't my idea of a great way to spend my time, okay? I have way higher priority things to do than go to buy new clothes every single season, all the time, all the time, consuming new clothes, getting rid of my old clothes. Are you kidding me, <laughs> right? And I know that this culture promotes that, but have you ever stopped to question that? Like disposable clothing, disposable technology, you know, everything potentially is so disposable. I hate it. It is absolutely not in line with my values. And when I was growing up as a little girl in elementary school, I'll never forget the, um, we had like a assembly, like a, the whole the whole elementary school assembled together in the gymnasium and we sat down and we learned about reducing, reusing, recycling. We learned about how, you know, um, when, when they log, they replant new trees and what happens with, you know, cans when they go into, the garbage, where our garbage goes, all this kind of stuff. Like, did people not have that education? Because if you went to the reduce, reuse, recycle, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> assembly in the gymnasium that I went to, I, it really impacted me. I was like, wow, this is so much waste. We waste so much stuff. This is a culture of waste. You know, I was like a little young girl at that point thinking like, we got to recycle. <laughs> we got to, you know, and it, you know, not that it was a brainwashing thing, but like I really, it was in line with my values from the moment they started speaking about it. There was nothing that didn't, you know, and that's I think why I remember so much because we had assemblies about a lot of different things, you know, and our principals would come and, you know, this was big and it's still big, you know, fashion is wasteful. 
if you buy trendy stuff, trendy shoes, trendy shirts, sure, you can maybe get it into, like, uh, somebody can repurpose it in, um, you know, through a thrift store or something like that. But, oh my gosh, then you got to get to a thrift store. Uh, to me, it's a waste of time. It's a bloody waste of time. It's a waste of money, you know. Yo, know, the new fashion, the new fashion, the new fashion. Like, your body is a certain type. It might not even look good in that fashion. You have to, my father in Poland was a tailor before we moved to Canada. And uh, he had his own tailor, his own leather shop. So he, when I was a young girl, instead of my mom teaching me how to dress, and she did have some, some say in that, because she's always been a very nice dresser, very European, lovely dresses, lovely skirts, lovely shirts. She's very European. And, but my dad was always like, this is your body type. This is like a nice skirt for you. This is a nice shirt for you. We need to tuck this in here. This needs to be brought in. So I would buy ready to wear clothing and I would bring them home and dad would fit them to me so that it would look like tailor-made. It was basically tailor-made, right? So not originally tailor-made, you know, but it was customized for my shape, my body. And that's where I learned this is what looks good on me. You know, and I've had comments, you know, you'd probably look good in a garbage bag, right? And there are things I do not look good in, but I don't wear them. I don't wear them, right? Um, I will try sometimes a little bit outside of my, like, classical, elegant, timeless look. Um, like, for cut match, I have this, like, kind of Rihanna style, like, cutouts on the side and, like, low cut with a little bow. Like, it's, it's totally, you know sexy and wild and different but very much cup match cup match is a big fashion show where there's like a lot of gosh cleavages like it's, it's all over the place right bright yellow like scantily thing it's not even that scanty right so um okay so sometimes i try something a little bit different but that has lasted me nine years as trendy as it was i can make it a classic on my body because it's not an unusual it's like a denim anyways Disposable fashion drives me crazy. Disposable technology drives me crazy. Disposable furniture drives me crazy. I'm like, I've had this stuff. I've been in Bermuda, you know, um, for 10 years now. And sometimes when I move, my landlords want to keep my, they want to purchase my furniture. So I've had that happen where they're like, can we purchase the furniture? Because the viewers have, um, you know, the people who have come to see it have wanted to, um, wanted it furnished when they saw your furniture. So I said, you know, okay, we negotiated something, so I don't have that furniture anymore, but it's not like it was disposable. It's like it was really nice, and the people wanted to keep it there, and I thought, you know, it did suit, it suited the room, it suited the color scheme, it suited the whole thing, right? So fine, but I've had a couch I took with me and said, you can't take this, <laughs> right? There's certain things, but with phones, so with furniture, you can make a decision, right? And I don't mean like getting like grimy, like grandma furniture, right? But I mean like solid, sexy, like this is a really masculine, like gorgeous desk. You know, it's espresso toned, it won't go out of style. It's the deep tones of wood never go out of style. Um, you know, and that's important to me. So just wanna share my values in that area because then you'll understand how I have absolutely no, I would never have integrity teaching somebody a diet or a way of eating that is disposable. Like, hey, this is going to be a 21 days. You'll drop 15 pounds in 21 days. And, you know, and then after 21 days, you're on your own, right? Like, this is not, <laughs> this is not long term. I mean, how long can you eat grapefruits, right? Grapefruits and cabbage. Um, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not, it's, oh my goodness. Like, literally, this dress I've had for so long. Um, you know, I flew it with me here to Bermuda, classic style. It's a classic style for a lot of women. Um, it's conservative, but playful. It's got a beautiful bright color. I don't like to wear a black very much. Um, I find it just very low vibration. Like the vibration of blue is like freedom, right? And like, I don't know, there's something to blue. Um, anyway, so my furniture isn't disposable. My clothing are sure as heck not disposable. Who who here has clothes from when they were 15, right? <laughs> Me, <laughs> right? I'm not gonna waste time and money. Uh, so many things are not disposable. But the phone, we have to. There is like no way, I will, I made this live as long as I could. <laughs> you know, and it's not even just like, oh, she's cheap. It's not that at all. It's literally a totally different value. And that value is long-term um, usage, long-term value, long-term good quality, right? That it looks damn good.
could have purchased this desk yesterday, right? Look at it. It's not from yesterday. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, so phones, disposable, drives me nuts. Diets, disposable, should drive you nuts, right? And maybe think about this a little bit, right? Um, <sighs> I have to calm down. So I know, you know, I've, I spoke to my uh, client Rhonda and we did a, a 90 minute, a one and a half hour interview the other day about her experience working with me for seven months, you know, just like what results she's had. And, you know, she lost 30 pounds as a byproduct of living healthier, living fueled, you know, focusing in on like her self care, getting the nutrients in time of day that you eat all these kind of things. And oh, 30 pounds gone, 30 pounds gone. You know, I would say it was effortless. She, she didn't use the word effortless because she wasn't thinking so much as like, oh, but she didn't focus on weight loss at all. She says it's like at least 20 times in the interview, we never focused on weight loss. We never focused on weight loss, right? A byproduct of you being the healthiest, happiest, most nutrient loaded, you know, knowledgeable version of you is a byproduct is your ideal weight. That is a byproduct. So it, it's, it's not a disposable diet. It is a lifelong, sustainable, long-term, forever fueled way of living. Do you know what I mean? So it's so exciting. It's so powerful, but it's just not that sexy. Cause it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't sell like 21 days, ooh, seven days, you know, you'll like lose all your excess fat. It's not a liposuction. Do you know what I mean? It's not a, it's not a plastic surgery. It's not a, you know, a laxative that you just like don't even absorb any of the food that you're putting into your body. You know, uh, it's not an eating disorder. It's not, uh, any, any kind of unhealthy crash diet that comes out of the diet industry you know you a lot of people come into my office and they are diet industry experts diet industry experts they know every diet they've done every diet they've tried every pill you know they've done every liquid they've done every funny exercise machine you know and they're diet industry experts but they know nothing about how to really fuel your body for optimal health ideal weight excellent energy, you know, enhanced energy, you know, uh, reversal of, chrono of, of chronic diseases, prevention of diseases and illnesses. Again, I've not been sick in so long. It's amazing, right? Like, as I said, I'm excited to go to the doctor. I'm excited to go get my blood work. You know, there's no negative anticipation for me. I figured this out. I have been on those disposable diets. So I definitely tried some of those. I tried the low calorie. I ended up super underweight because I'm very driven and my body actually needs more calories than the average woman needs. It's just, that's how I am. Um, and I have a high metabolism. I have a lot of muscle on my body. I have really strong bones. There's like, I'm always heavier in pounds than people assume I am. They're always like, oh, you look so tiny. Then they pick me up. They're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, you know, solid woman. <laughs> um, so yeah, I tried the calorie thing, you know, calories made me severely underweight. Um, and I won, I got like 108 pounds, but that's almost anorexic. Do you know, pretty much anorexic for, for my size. It looked horrendous. I was like, this is stupid. Um, you know, this is, I'm very good at it. I, I, I'm very good at everything that I try to do, right? So that's, I'm proud of that fact, but you can also go the wrong way, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, that's, that was a disposable diet. I tried some liquids. Those were pretty stupid, right? You pay money and all you do is you lose, uh, you lose water weight. You lose, uh, you start to just, you know, not even digest your food. It's more like a laxative. It was so stupid. Um, all of these disposable, disposable, dumb ideas and diets that just come out of this diet industry that I think is preying on people's desperation, their you know, lack of knowledge, their lack of confidence, secure knowledge in how to take care of this body because we weren't taught this in school. This is not taught in school. It's not. It's so, so dumb that it isn't. I would love to create a curriculum from everything from elementary all the way through to, you know, your PhD about how to take care of this body that you're given because we are not taught it, right? I recently um, met with a couple for 
uh, for working with them. And uh, she has just gotten pregnant after several rounds of, of, of in vitro. And, you know, and she said, you know, I was always the skinniest when I ate pasta. Like every time I ate pasta, I was just like the skinniest I've ever been. And I, and I could see that there was some pride in there, you know, like really proud of how she could eat carbs day and night and be skinny, but you couldn't get pregnant, right? You couldn't get pregnant. Like, have you thought about what it, see, people just think about, I just want to be skinny. Okay. And that's when you get into trouble because it's such a low standard. I just want to be skinny. It's such a low standard. Okay. You can be skinny and have a totally depleted immune system, like an immune system that isn't there for you. You can be skinny and lose your hair. You can be skinny and lose your menstruation, like be totally infertile. You can be skinny. You can achieve skinny and be sick as hell. You can achieve skinny and be sick as hell. So it's such a low standard. It's kind of BS. I'm just like, Oh my goodness. Right? So the whole thing is that you need to shift in a different direction, but the diet industry is all like, be skinny, be skinny, be skinny. <laughs> it's a, they're blinding you. It's like Vegas lights. Be skinny, be skinny, be skinny, be skinny. All you see is be skinny and it's what you want. You're blinded and you're like, oh, I'm going to go towards that one, right? It's so, it's such a trick. It's a trick. It's a diet industry trick, right? And that's so awful because so many millions of people are pumping money and effort and time and hope into this industry that's just a bunch of Vegas lights, you know, and it's leading you the wrong direction because skinny is a too low standard. It's a low, low standard. You can be so sick, so sick, unable to bear children, unable to, oh my gosh, your hair is falling out. You're being skinny is just a low standard. So being fueled is a whole other level. It's for life. Fueled is forever. Okay. Like Rhonda says in the video, she's worked with me seven months, one-on-one, -on -one, and because we had a lot of untangling to do in her unique situation where we had to personalize her approach, right? Personalize the approach there because she had a whole slew of health issues she's coming in with that were really, really knotted and tied together, right? So we need to untangle one at a time. So the one-on-one -on -one is really important when that's a scenario that you want to come in you know, and, and work with me. In that kind of scenario so and then she said she's like agatha like i i was one you know we wanted a couple more sessions set up because she's gotten all of her goals and 30 pounds weight loss and and counting okay because she was she was overweight for her height and she knew it she told me i don't feel well but it wasn't as important as like all of her health issues i recommend you watch that video it's a good 90 minute investment of your time but you will see the power that a fueled philosophy has when working with somebody. Now, an important thing is that she trusts the process. So she really trusted the process and she wasn't having like, you know, the video that I just did yesterday where um, we talked about what makes people not succeed. So she didn't have any of those things. Like she was, she was really there, right? Okay, anyways, so <laughs> got a little off track. So yeah. All this diet industry stuff is just blinding you with the thing that you want, give them what they want, give them what they want, but not, they're not giving you what you need and what you need, what we need in this culture of calories and vegan and, and raw vegan and, you know, and oh my gosh, and the whole underweight thing being so, we need to just come to alignment and realize that success in this area is 100% sustainable I am complete evidence of that. I have clothes from when I was 16 <laughs> that fit me. I'm 40, <laughs> right? And also like it's sustainable. It's lifelong. Fueled is forever. I always think fueled is forever. I'm helping people forever. Like Rhonda, which is what I was going to say about Rhonda, was she said, I realize that you're out of a job. You know, I'm like, like out of a job with her when, when she's done the next few sessions because it's, she has a solid foundation. It's not like she doesn't know what to do next. She knows exactly what to do. She knows exactly how much to eat. She knows when to eat. She knows what to eat. She knows what to do when eating becomes a crutch, when she feels emotional about something and she wants to eat and she knows how to now unpack that and liberate herself from that. There's a freedom with being fueled. There is a liberation. There is a, like a lifelong, um, I'm so passionate about this. You know, it's not a disposable diet. 
It's not a disposable Las Vegas Lights diet, you know? I'm not selling, you know, and maybe, <laughs> maybe it would be smart if I sort of started drawing people in with these Las Vegas Lights, right? But you know what? The integrity that I have with what I teach, with what I've done for myself, with my health, I have overcome so many health issues and I have a body I am in love with, in love with. How many women and men can say that? How many? I was watching a show yesterday and it said, you know, like uh, it was a what to wear on a first date. Okay. Um, it was uh, this, this one guy that I follow because I love the way he approaches his business online. And so he had a guest on and she was talking, she was a fashion person and she was sharing what to wear on a first date. And she actually said this thing that really stood out to me. It said, a lot of women don't like to look at themselves naked, like in front of the mirror, right? They don't like this. They don't like that. They don't like this. Well, you know what? If you don't decide to love yourself, I thought, wow, that's really weird. I didn't actually really realize that because I think I look great. <laughs> and it's been a very, you know, but I didn't always. And I remember falling prey to those disposable diets when you don't have that sense of self inside of you. So when you get a program that brings up your sense of self, teaches you sustainable methods of eating and enjoying life and enjoying the pleasures of food, but always being able to understand what is right for you, you know, the way that I teach is just, it's super ancient. <laughs> I teach methods that are very based, very much based on Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a 10 thousand year old health philosophy from ancient India. All right. Ancient India. So Deepak Chopra might be the most, uh, celebrity Ayurvedic, um, teacher out there that you may already have heard of. And, uh, I've been practicing and studying Ayurveda on my own since I was 16. So that's 24 years because I'm 40. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's a 10 thousand year old method that's relevant today. It's ancient wisdom from modern times. And they weren't trying to sell diets 10,000 years ago. It, it wasn't, there wasn't like an industry like that, you know? So you learn legit, long-term, fueled for life methods of being happy in your skin, being healthy on the inside, being skinny, but not sick being skinny, but being healthy, you know, no problems with the flu, with this, with that, you really get you fueled up, right? You just all of a sudden, it's like all these things fall away, fall away, fall away, fall away. Anyways, that's all that I'm really going to go into. I've realized I'm at 27 minutes, so it's kind of long. Um, and I may edit this down. <laughs> So, but that's what I wanted to share. I hate this disposable phone. I like to have things long-term for life if possible and leave it in my will. Um, so I look for, when I look as a consumer, I look for quality. I look for elegance. I look for like that, like timelessness. Um, I look for sparks joy. Fits me my character, my values, my body type, the color schemes that look good on me. You know, all these things, I think of a bigger picture than 21 days, one quarter, you know, this fashion season, right? It's just, um, it's just, it's so disposable, it makes me angry, <laughs> really frustrated. It makes me so frustrated, so frustrated. Um, and it should, if you really think about it, cause some frustration in you too. I don't want to start to like, you know, get people all frustrated, but maybe critical and thinking critically about what you may be considering for your health, for your diet. And if you're ready to ditch disposable diets, please DM me. When you are ready to ditch disposable diets, please DM me because I would love to help you scrub your brain of all the trash and, you know, get the attic cleared, clear your attic of all the garbage books and all the garbage products and all the garbage ideas and stuff like that that never worked for a long term. A real proper way of maintaining an excellent body composition and fabulous blood work should last you through all your pregnancies, all the holidays, 
all the vacations, all the breakups, divorces, deaths, celebrations, it shouldn't phase your eating. Oh, I need to plug in. There we go. I'm sorry, I got really excited and forgot to plug it. I did. <laughs> um, it shouldn't phase, you know, where you are should work with how you're eating. And that's what I teach. Month after month, year after year, heartache after happy celebration, you know? It's a long-term thing. You don't divorce the fueled way of living. It's just, it's there for you for life, like a really great supportive partner, right? So even marriages are disposable nowadays, right? So um, go figure, <laughs> go figure. And it's our, it's our culture, you know, we are inside this box and you may not see it. So I hope that I could at least uh, shed some light on the box that you're in, right? This is the box of our Western culture. It's disposable. It's consumerist, disposable, and really kind of reckless in a way. It's, it's very trashy. Um, you know, reckless marriages, reckless uh, purchases of, of cars are disposable. You know, it's so much is disposable, it's horrible. Um, and yeah, I'm the kind of person who has like one bag of garbage every week. It's like small and compact and everything else was taken care of. Like I don't, you don't, I don't buy packaged foods, uh, cereal boxes don't exist in my house, right? So, um, so just when you're buying produce, it's like very little garbage, right? A little bit for meat, a little bit of, you know, wrapping that was around the fish and that's it, right? So yeah, a couple of products, you know, organic stuff, wash my hair with and hmm. Hope this gives you something, some food for thought. Um, and I am happy to share any more about this. If you have any questions or if you want to leave a comment down in the section below, I would love to share more. Um, if you have any questions because yeah, um, from our cell phones to our fashion, to our marriages, to diets inside of Western culture, tremendously disposable. And I hope that this has been a, you know, a fun, <laughs> but eye opening, you know, um, session. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Um, if you'd like to speak to me about Fueled, working one-on-one -on -one together or doing the Energize Executive together, and I also have a special, I'll be announcing very soon something else new that's coming up um, that's specifically aimed at women. All right, so keep your eyes out for that. Watch his face. Have yourself a great Friday. Have yourself a great weekend. And I love you and I wish you health, happiness, and being skinny but healthy. <laughs> Anyways, feel great and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Oh, hey, you made it to the end of this video. Well, I have a lot more that you are going to love. Be sure to click through to the next video and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and smash that notification icon so that you always know what's happening. This is Agatha for Fueled, and I will see you in the next video.